French UN peacekeepers were involved in a pivotal moment in the Bosnian War, called the Battle of Urbania Bridge. Join us in welcoming Justin Taylor as he unravels the little-known story that has consequences all the way up to today. Peacekeeping operations are one of the more thankless jobs a soldier can perform while in the military. And while they're generally overlooked while we have hot wars going around all over the world, it seems they're one of the more common deployments that militaries will conduct. France's military was on the forefront of peacekeeping operations in the late 20th century. The breakup of the Soviet Union rapidly and violently destabilized the entire region of Eastern Europe. And the sudden outbreak in interstate conflict meant Western armies needed to step in to prevent any additional violence against the civilian population. At the heart of this was the collapse of Yugoslavia, a multi-ethnic state that first began to fall apart in June of 1991, which sparked nationalist uprisings in each of the six republics within the one country. What followed was a horrific spread of human suffering, ethnic fighting, and mass displacement. And this started the Bosnian War. In 1992, ethnic Serbians began their siege of Sarajevo, which would be the longest military siege in living memory, lasting over four years. The French armed forces under the UN mandate were deployed to the city of Sarajevo in order to protect the civilian population as best they could and to prevent the Serbians from seizing the city. But by 1992, the city was completely surrounded and a no man's land existed around Sarajevo, which was just a free game for any Serbian sniper to shoot at civilians or UN peacekeepers. A critical movement corridor into the city was the Verbanja Bridge that connected the city and outlying suburbs over the Miljaka River. A French UN Pro 4 mechanized infantry company under the 3rd Marine Infantry Regiment was tasked with holding this critical portion of infrastructure in order to block Serbian advances into the city. This small and otherwise unassuming bridge would then go on to become famous for the actions of French peacekeepers at that time. On May 27, 1995, at approximately 4.30 in the morning, Serbian commandos disguised as UN peacekeepers wearing their helmets, flak jackets, and even driving the white UN APCs snuck up on both the north and the south ends of the UN outposts on the Verbanja Bridge. They then captured the 12 French Marines defending it, taking them hostage. The speed at which they were able to seize the bridge meant the French had no opportunity to radio back what was going on or even ask for help. Of the 12 Marines stationed on the bridge, 10 were taken back as prisoners of war, but two were held hostage at gunpoint to serve as human shields, which at this point in the war was a fairly common Serbian tactic. The sudden radio silence was the first sign to the French that something wasn't right. The company commander in charge of the troops on the bridge, Captain Francois Le Connetre, then personally drove down to the bridge to see why the sudden radio darkness. After breaching the first outpost, a Serbian commando attempted to take Captain Leconetre hostage, but he was able to quickly escape and drive away in order to report the situation back to Hyder. He immediately reported the situation to his chain of command, who were headquartered at the Skenderija Stadium. His message was given directly to Colonel Eric Sendal, commander of the 4th French Battalion operating in the city. The colonel immediately contacted the French president, Jacques Chirac, who made the executive decision to completely bypass the UN chain of command and authorize an immediate counterattack to retake the bridge. By 7.30 in the morning, just three hours after the bridge was taken by the Serbs, plans for a counterattack had already begun, but they knew it was going to be a hard fight. The Serbians were able to use the defensive structures on the bridge that the French had built against them, and bridge assaults by any measure are difficult to begin with. Not only that, but they had to deal with the two hostages that were being held on the bridge. This meant that they couldn't just simply call on artillery or airstrikes or just level the bridge entirely because it would kill those two marines. They knew that they would be forced to conduct a light infantry assault to seize the area. A platoon of 30 marines was dispatched for the operation and their purpose was to seize the northern end of the bridge with the support of another 70 French troops, 6 ERC-90 armored cars, and several VAB APCs. Taking the northern end of the bridge was the decisive point of the entire operation. If they could take it, they could use it as a foothold to push the Serbs further back down south over the bridge and then eventually back over the border. This first outpost would be the turning point of the entire fight, and as you'll see later, possibly the turning point of the entire Bosnian war. I knew perfectly well after the contact I got in with the Serbs that there would be blood. In that moment, I understood how tough it would be and how scared I was, because I understood what it was going to happen. I understood it was going to be hand-to-hand -hand fighting. As the platoon of Marines stepped off on their operation, the order was given to fix bayonets. As the platoon approached the bridge, their first target was a sandbag reinforced bunker just off of the northern outpost. This was the strong point of that point of defense, 
and was housing 14 Serbian commandos defending it. As they approached the bunker, the French platoon was quickly pinned down, and the lieutenant platoon commander was hit, forcing Captain Leconitre to take over charge of the operation. They then brought in the ERC-90s to provide supporting fire as they maneuvered forward, using its heavy cannons and mounted heavy machine guns. This was then met with mortar fire and anti-aircraft fire, directly shooting at the French as they assaulted forward. But the support from the ERCs gave the platoon just enough of an opening to continue to maneuver onto the bunker, and Captain Leconitre called for a bayonet charge. This was the first bayonet charge the French had done since the Korean War 40 years prior. And bayonet charges, especially in modern conflicts, are one of the most intense orders that can be given to any soldier on the ground. Suddenly, we are face to face with what is the most extreme in combat. It feels as if you're watching the events with a delay. First, it is that you have to vanquish your fear. It is very difficult. Once you have done it, it feels like nothing can stop you anymore. The floodgates are open. You know what you will do, no matter what happens. And you will get revenge from the fear that was inflicted upon you. It is where we express our human instinct in the most vile way. The French were able to take the bunker, but sustained several casualties as they did so. The decision was made to hold on the northern end of the bridge, using it as a foothold to keep the southern end of the bridge with the Serbians decisively engaged and pinned down. By all accounts, the determination by the Serbians to hold on to the bridge was higher than expected given how few of them that there were. And any kind of charge just straight across the bridge in the open with no cover completely canalized into one area would have been suicidal at best. Bosnian snipers from the north began supporting the French with sniper fire on their own accord, but ended up wounding one of the hostages by mistake and were pulled back. Meanwhile, a French marine manning a nearby observation post and a cemetery and providing information back to the main body was killed. After 32 minutes of intense firefight, the southern end of the bridge was still held by the Serbians. But realizing that they were cut off without any kind of support, running low on ammo and manpower, they brokered a truce with the French in order to retrieve their dead and wounded for the north end of the bridge and threatened to execute the hostages if the fighting continued. The wounded hostage was released and immediately air medevaced out of the area for treatment, but the second one just managed to escape on his own. The Serbs, realizing that they were low on ammo, running out of people very quickly and no longer had any human shield bargaining chips to deal with, quickly abandoned the post, gave up, and just walked away. By all accounts, the assault on the bunker was a success, but at a cost. Two French Marines were killed and 17 wounded, while 10 of the original 12 taken hostage were kept as prisoners of war for the remainder of the conflict. Four Serbian commandos were killed in the fight, several more wounded, and four were taken prisoner of war afterwards. The impact of the battle and the successful use of a more aggressive approach towards protecting the Bosnian population led the UN to completely shift their strategy in the region. UN redeployments began focusing more on defensible locations that would be harder to attack and more difficult to surround. In June of 1995, the UN Security Council Resolution 998 was passed. This established a massive rapid reaction force consisting of 12,500 heavily armed troops. These soldiers were granted a more aggressive set of rules of engagement, seeing as they would only be activated in the case of a major break in peace like at the Verbanja Bridge. This triggered a shift from peacekeeping to peace enforcement, in which the UN authorized itself less restrictions to prevent further violence. And they also dropped the use of blue helmets and white vehicles in order to make a clear visual distinction that future actions would not be taken lightly. Senior British, French, and American brass warned the Serbs that any other action like at the Verbaja Bridge would be met with overwhelming and disproportionate responses. Which, if you didn't know, is just code for, we are going to bomb the absolute shit out of you. After the Battle of Verbaja Bridge, the French troops in the region and around Sarajevo noticed a difference in how the Serbs reacted to everything. Since the incident, they are strangely quiet towards us, one said. The quick reaction in the battle leading to the implementation of the UNRF is reported as one of the driving factors that helped the conflict later that year during the Dayton Agreement Peace Accords. Interestingly enough, though, the decision by the French president to circumvent the UN authorities in order to retake the bridge and get the hostages back was not fully supported by the French government. The French Chief of Defense Staff Admiral Jacques Lanzade threatened the resignation over the move, and it was further condemned by the French Prime Minister Alain Juppé and Defense Minister Charles Millon. I'm never making fun of Cappy for mispronouncing things. This is getting hard. In terms of popular support, though, the actions on the morning of May 27th were met with approval by the French population, and public opinion of French peacekeeping operations was high, with the majority of French citizens strongly supporting the military intervention. 
For the then Captain Lacan Atre, the actions on May 27th made him famous almost overnight, and the following change in the tide of the Bosnian War is largely attributed to their actions on that morning. After Bosnia, he would go on to instruct at Saint Cyr, or France's most prestigious military academy, and would eventually go on to serve as the commander of the 3rd Marine Infantry Regiment, the same regiment he fought under in Bosnia. He would continue his steady climbing of the ranks until July 20th of 2017, when he was appointed as Chief of Defense Staff by President Macron, which is the highest position in the French Armed Forces. Ultimately, his actions and the actions of his Marines on that morning was the linchpin turning point in the entire conflict. Their success on that bridge and the waterfall of effects that followed helped bring a years-long devastating and bloody conflict to a close and show the importance of initiative and violence of action on the battlefield. If you want to see more, I've linked all the sources that I referenced down in the description. Let me know in the comments what you want to see more of or any topics you want to see covered or if you just want to tell me that I'm really bad at pronouncing French names, which is completely fair. Once again, I'm Justin Taylor. He would task on purpose for squad. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to support the channel. It helps out a lot. And I will see you very soon in the next one.